Welcome to Automation's official design competition. In this video you are joining us for the finals of Category J, the 2035 concept cars. Your hosts Chris and Rob are joined by today's very special guest and celebrity judge Frank Stephenson. Frank is no less than an automotive design legend with one of the most prolific and diverse portfolios of any modern automotive designer. He does have a major following on YouTube as well, where he critiques designs from both the real world and from games too. Check out his links below. For those of you who would like to see a more in-depth analysis of the finalist designs, as well as an interview with Frank sharing some of his vast design knowledge, join us for our roundtable discussion in our next video. But for now. 10 cars out of the 34 entries have made it through the pre-selection process and into these finals. Let's get into it. A massive, big presence, instant looker with an attitude. It somehow manages to be beast and beauty at the same time. Absolutely brilliant redesign. I just wish the front's headlight solution went with something a little bit more similar to that. It's too evil looking for an otherwise elegant car. Body is fine, there's nothing wrong with the body. It's got suicide doors in the back, you can see where the front, uh, the door handle is. Uh, it's, it's obviously ride adjustable because you would never ride a car like that, drive a car like that uh, in the city. I think there's a lot of repetition and things we've already seen before in the past. That's my only fault or negative thing about this, I think. This cyberpunk inspired sedan is long, low, and mean. Maybe even a little bit too mean. You can't fault it for having no presence though, because this thing is all about presence. Generally it's quite nicely done, although I think some of the details in the front are a little bit off-putting. Quite unconventional. This, but this is this is kind of what I was expecting to see from somebody who's dreaming about becoming a car designer. This is something that you know uh, doesn't exist. It could exist if he worked, or this guy was working for Mattel or some company that you know did. This is not even Hot Wheels. This is way past Hot Wheels. This, yeah, it's pretty stunning. I hope this isn't. Uh, you know, we're already seeing one of the best designs in, in the competition, maybe. It looks like it could be on the road today. Everything is very sharp on it. And then there's a bit of softness in some areas, but basically it's more of a graphic approach rather than a sort of a form approach. It's maybe aggressive and uh, angry. It doesn't look friendly to me. It's not like a car would walk up to it and say, me and you are going home. This one takes us into the future just the right amount. Consistent in its themes and good looking all round, the only part deviating is the rear, which has a much more rounded look than the rest of the car. Great color and lighting theme.
A modern supercar on the front, drifting off to futuristic shapes and an aerodynamics focused design towards the rear. Expertly designed with just a few details, like the choice of color, that feel off or unnecessary. It's cool and weird at the same time. The two rear wheels are like attached. It's, I've never seen anything like it. So that, in that sense, it's cool. There's, it's kind of like no back end to the car. I mean, there is a back end, but there's no back end. <laughs> it's like we're in the middle of the back of the car go. While I don't particularly appreciate the fact that this is just a box on wheels, there are some nice details in it here and there, especially with the front headlights and the rear taillights. Whether or not this is actually a really good concept by itself, I really don't know. I certainly hope this isn't what we're driving in 2035, and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same. You can't look at this and say it's a beautiful car. You'd say it's a product. It's kind of like somebody who, who doesn't really design cars would design this. It would come from somebody who's more into, I wouldn't even say architecture or furniture, but it's definitely somebody who's into more like a product type of design field. A really neat, minimalist design that works. I can see this one driving tourists around in high-tech cities, skipping all the bad parts of town. Energy used while driving? Minimal. Energy used to not fry its passengers in sunshine? Massive. It's cute. I don't know how easy it is to get, it looks, uh, there's no shut lines on it, so I'm not sure how you get into the car. I see this more as almost like, um, like those bikes that you see around town that you can just get on, or a scooter or something, you can just get onto it and use it, or it takes you somewhere or whatever. It's not really a, a vehicle that you would buy as, you know, my first car is this, or I'm going to buy this for my child to go off to the university. This is a premium sedan from the relatively near future. I quite like the shapes and I quite like the 3D fixture work that gives a little bit of depth to an otherwise fairly plain design. Everything is well implemented and tasteful. Nicely done.
you know, 10 years ago, this wouldn't look futuristic probably today. It looks normal, kind of like Tesla-ish or Audi-ish or Polestar-ish maybe. It's pretty, but it's not creative. Pretty exciting roadster design with some old school ICE fun. Super smooth looking until you hit the back. Unfortunately, it is suffering from some implementation and technical issues that make certain angles rather awkward looking. I mean, the back end doesn't do it for me, but the front was, the front and side are kind of cool. The front's got sort of an old, um, old 80s uh, uh, Corvette concept feel to it. Is this a four-seat supercar, or is this merely a family sedan that just got a little bit too racy? One really can't tell. There's an awful lot going on here, and I'm not really sure that the designer or the car itself really knows what it's trying to be here. It's fairly well done otherwise, though. But in a certain sense, it's cool. It's got sort of a long tail feel to it, which is kind of a very short front overhang, long rear overhang so it's kind of got that that uh, arrow look almost kind of teardrop look to it sort of in profile i wouldn't say it's a great design because there's there's it's hard to understand some of the features on it it's very crude A literal luxury boat, a flying one on top of that, way out there and luxurious, but uh, an intriguing design study. In the right light, it does have a beautiful color scheme too, accentuating the flow of its design very well. It's stunning. You're gonna tell me this is a car or a boat? I mean, 99% of the people on first impression would say it's a boat. And then you start looking at it, you start realizing it's actually, it's a car going in, a boat going in reverse that is actually a car.
And there we have it. Big congratulations goes to Chief Zack for the winning design, to Esdem for a close second place and to Speedy Boy for third place. For a more in-depth analysis of today's finalists, as well as an interview with our special guest, join us for our roundtable discussion in the next video. Also, subscribe to the channel and check out the competition playlist to not miss any of the fantastic and questionable designs that we showcase. Let us know what you thought of the featured designs in the comments below and visit the Automation Game Instagram channel where you can vote for your favorite finalist in our story.